Hello, I'm JW. Today we're going to have a look at the difference between two types of plastics. Now both of these are the fronts of some socket outlets we took apart previously. This one is made of urea formaldehyde, which is a hard and fairly robust material, also in the same sort of family as Bakelite and similar things like that. And then this one is made of polycarbonate, which is a thermoplastic. And the difference between these is that the thermoplastic one will melt when at a high temperature, and the thermoset one should not. Now uh, we're going to put these both on the same piece of equipment here and uh, just have a quick look at that and then we'll see what happens when they get hot. So here's the setup here, we've got the uh, thing here which is actually for heating uh, circuit boards but we're going to use it for these anyway. So hot air comes out of the hole here. Just got this probe here so we can see the actual temperature. Although this has a temperature knob on the front it's the actual temperature inside so not necessarily representing what comes out of it. Timer there just to see how long it's been going on and then the question is just placing the item in uh, the top like that. So pretty straightforward, just going to uh, place it there, turn on the heat to a uh, decent sort of temperature and see what happens. Now of course normally you know, electrical items do not get hot because obviously they're supposed to be fitted correctly and all that but uh, of course they can get hot when you have a loose connection on the back or in the case of a socket like this if uh, say you had a plug with a uh, loose terminal or it wasn't quite the right shape pin or something like that. So these things getting hot is certainly not particularly unusual, it can happen, so we're going to see what would happen here in the case of this one, the thermoset and the other kind, the thermoplastic. So we'll start the timer going there and uh, just the knob there to what it claims to be 250, but as we'll see in a moment uh, the actual air coming out isn't at 250, it's uh, more like sort of 180 or so, but uh, it doesn't particularly matter, we'll just uh, use whatever comes out of there. So. We'll keep going. Now I see it's uh, gone over the uh, mark considerably there. That just happens to be a feature of this particular low-cost cheapomatic heater in that it overshoots considerably and then eventually will stabilise at uh, some kind of temperature. So we see there it's around 170, 175 sort of area. Now this is the thermo set which uh, shouldn't be damaged by even quite a lot of heat on there. So we're going to leave this running on here for about 10 minutes and then we'll come back at the end and see what it looks like after that. So that's the 10 minutes there, and we see the temperature is around 188, so it has drifted slightly. So we'll just turn off the heating part there, just leave the fan running, and we'll just remove it from there with those uh, metal plier things, because obviously it's uh, extremely hot. So as you can see, there's no real visible damage to the thing. Put it on the edge here, it just shows it's not sort of melted or it's coming off or whatever. So uh, despite it being that 180 odd degrees centigrade for 10 minutes, no visible damage whatsoever and it's not deformed and uh, disintegrated or melted or done pretty much anything else. Now I'll do the same again with the thermoplastic version. And this is uh, going to be exactly the same as we did before. And we're going to use the exact same temperature settings, I haven't actually altered the temperature dial on the front there. Now the uh, thermocouple thing is showing 43 because there's obviously some residual heat coming out of the thing but uh, nevertheless we'll turn the heater on and uh, as before it'll ramp up uh, very quickly. It will overshoot somewhat so we're in the sort of 200 range and then it should drop back to around that sort of 175, 180 kind of area that we had on the previous example. Now this is polycarbonate and the actual melting temperature will depend on various additives that have obviously been put into it but uh, we'll see how it goes on the same temperature as before. And again, we'll leave this running for 10 minutes at around 170, 180 kind of temperature. We'll come back at the end and see what it looks like then. So we're coming up to that 10 minute mark again. So temperature is now about 186 there, so very similar to what we had previously. And uh, visibly from the position here, there's nothing obvious that sort of melted or dripped down or whatever. So we'll just turn the heater off there. And again we'll just remove it from the uh, heating point there and uh, have a look at the bottom edge there. There is some kind of melt going on there but it's certainly nothing of any major significance and uh, just a bit of sort of deformation along that lower edge there. The rest of it is pretty much still intact. Nothing sort of burnt blackened or anything else and uh, pressing on there doesn't actually deform it any further. So it's going to be the case that it's just uh, deformed when it was in the heat and basically as soon as the heat was removed it's uh, gone back to a solid material. Now 
Now I'm going to do this again. I've turned the uh, temperature on the thing to the absolute maximum, which claims to be 350. And again, we've got the uh, probe in the way there. So we'll see where this goes. It is already going well over 200. This is the thermo set version, and it's the same one we used before. So just putting it back in position. And we're going to leave it running for five minutes this time and see what we get after that. So I've just going up to the five minute mark now, and you can see the temperature's uh, around 230, which is about 50 degrees hotter than we had on that previous 10 minute test. So we'll uh, just turn off the heater there, and then we'll have a look at the what's left on the bottom of this one. Again, the whole thing doesn't particularly look uh, damaged or completely destroyed there. There is a small amount of damage on the very bottom edge. Again, just putting it there, no material comes off of that, so it's still solid. So a very, very slight mark along that bottom edge there. We'll have a look again if it's closer later on. But again, no real uh, damage there. And so that was 230 degrees centigrade for five minutes. And then we'll do the same, of course, with the uh, thermoplastic one. And again, it's got that small melt on the bottom already from where we heated it before. Same temperature settings, pretty much cranked up to the maximum that this thing goes to. And again, we'll run this for the five minutes again to see what it looks like after that. Now, just over four and a half minutes in, and we can see on the uh, bottom edge of the plate there, there is a certain amount of melting going on as it's certainly uh, sagged somewhat there. Temperature's around 222 there, so again, pretty much what we had on the other one. So there is certainly a bit of melting going on at these temperatures, and they say after approximately five minutes of time. So we'll take the uh, heat off again, and then we'll just have a look at the bottom edge there. So that's five minutes done, we'll turn the heat off, and the uh, family stays running obviously to cool the equipment. And we can see that there is a certain amount of bending and softening on the bottom edge there. It does press in when pushed onto the casing there. And you'll see that that has basically uh, softened and melted out of position. Oh, well, bearing in mind, that's only that very bottom edge, so basically which was right in the actual heated air, and bearing in mind the rest of the hot air was flowing at the back and the front of this, so it has fared pretty well, and so that was around a temperature of about 230 degrees centigrade. So a closer look here, this is the uh, Uriel formaldehyde one, and you see it's just a very slight damage on that edge there, nothing uh, really significant at all still fully structurally intact and you see it's just sort of cracked slightly there and a little bit of discoloration but again nothing really noticeable there and again that's been in on the two temperatures there for the 10 minutes initially and then the five minutes at the higher temperature and this one is the thermoplastic polycarbonate and you can see that the plastic has definitely softened there and deformed but again it's still relatively minor so in terms of these having, say, an overheating plug or whatever in, there may be some discoloration or melting, but it's not going to be uh, sort of dripping on the carpet or anything like that. Again, it's pretty much what you'd expect to uh, find on something that is reasonably compliant with the various regulations of these things. So you see there, just a the comparison between the two edges, certainly more damage on the thermoplastic, but again, it's fairly minor in both cases. Now, of course, that was just uh, heating up with a uh, hot air thing, but uh, we need to see what happens with these, of course, when a flame is directly applied. Now, of course, this is not something that would normally happen in a general installation, but we're going to do it anyway just to get some idea of the differences between these two materials. So what we've got here is a butane gas torch, and we'll turn that on, and uh, just going to place the two items in front of that and see what happens. Now, this is the uh, ureformaldehyde one, or the thermoset material. So placing it directly in the flame there, and we can see it goes brown fairly quickly there. But you notice it's not actually burning, there's no flame coming off of the material. And then we hold it in there long, you see it's actually glowing red on the back, so that's getting up to a fairly high temperature. But again, there's no actual flaming coming off of that, it's just purely the bit of char going on on the back there. So we'll keep it going here for a bit longer. This is, of course, being done outside, so if any uh, toxic gases are given off, they won't be uh, being inhaled. Now, the whole back of it is now glowing red there, and we can see a bit of sort of red uh, coming off there as the flame is deflected from the gun. And again, the thing itself is not actually burning, 
and it's not melting either, it's still fully structurally intact, a fair bit of smoke coming off. The other side there is still pretty much as it started with. So this is really why these types of thermoset materials are used for electrical items. In the event of overheating or even a fairly serious fire like this, they are extremely durable and they, uh, they don't burn themselves and they don't uh, obviously melt and drip on the floor and leave live parts exposed. So that's uh, what we've got there, so quite charred and cracked on the back, but say fully intact, not actually burning, just a bit of obviously smoking and smouldering going on there with the blackened bits on the back. Now moving on to the uh, thermoplastic version, so exactly the same. And you can see straight away a major difference in that there's a lot of yellow flame coming off of this. And now you can see the whole thing is basically on fire. So significant difference there already, as in this thing is actually burning, whereas the other one of course was just charring up. And if we take it out of the flame there, you see the flames do continue for a while, although they of course do extinguish, which again is what you would expect. So we'll put it back in the flame again because uh, the other one was in for that time. And you can see that it does certainly aid in combustion, because all those flames, of course, are far more than is what's coming out of the gas torch. And again, we move it from that, you see it's now burnt right through the other side, and it's still burning when it's away from the flame, although there is some self-extinguishing uh, effect going on. And now it's getting to a high temperature, so we can see the plastic is now melting and dripping down. So again, not something that's particularly desirable. But again, this is a very extreme test, and... Uh, not something that would normally happen in a normal installation unless there was actually a fire going on. So well alight now and you see the whole thing is now just melting into a soft and uh, gungy mess. So that's pretty much uh, the end of that. And you see a lot of black smoke coming off and uh, various flames still coming out of it which uh, do extinguish after a few seconds. So uh, that's uh, pretty much the end of that one. So here's what's left at the end, so that's the thermoset one. Quite blackened and charred on the back, and you see that there's cracking of the material there, but structurally it's still fully intact. It hasn't uh, disintegrated into anything else, and uh, the front looks pretty much as we started. This thing on the other hand is a congealed, melted mess, so uh, obviously a completely different type of material. And this is primarily due to that that this sort of plastic will melt at a high temperature, and whereas the other kind does not. Now I'd say this is obviously a fairly extreme test, so uh, in terms of using these things, whether they're made of thermoset or thermoplastic materials, it's probably not a huge significant difference. However, certainly in the case of a fire or whatever, it's going to be much better to have the uh, thermoset materials. This is also why things like old fuses in rewildable fuse boxes are made of a similar material, so if they got hot and even set on fire, you didn't get that sort of melting and burning effect, it just uh, contained it within the box there. So uh, that's it for this video. Until next time, thanks for watching.